Good day, everyone. Yeah, welcome uh, to this uh, soft talk seminar. Yeah, I'm planning, you know, to continue this series and hopefully, you know, invite uh, more people to share their research with us. Uh, today, uh, I'm very happy to have uh, Manmata Mahato uh, from the Korean Institute of uh, Science, Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, known as KAIST. So he's going to talk about his research on electroionic artificial muscles. So Manmata uh, is a research associate professor at uh, Soft Robotics and Intelligent Materials, SREAM Lab at KAIST. He, he got his PhD from Indian Institute of Technology, uh, uh, Khargapur in 2017. And then he joined as a postdoc to KAIST and uh, he had also some like uh, industrial experiments and he has done uh, lots of great research and which brought him also a prestigious award, the 2022 Nano Korea Young Scientist Awards. Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for um, uh, joining us, uh, Hanmata. The, the floor thank is yours. You. I, I just need to give you the permission for uh, co-hosting. Yeah. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Ahmed, for your nice introduction. I am very happy and I, I, I feel very pleased to uh, deliver my work in this soft talk. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I hope my screen is visible. Huh? Hello. Uh, yes, uh, my screen. Is... Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you for attending my talk. Uh, I'm working here at KAIST. And today's of today's talk is electronic artificial muscles for biomedical software robots. Uh, I hope. Uh, uh, I, I hope my presentation will be uh, fulfill this topic. So before going to the presentation, I would like to uh, show like the structure of our lab. In the in this lab, our lab, his name is Soft Robotics and Intelligent Materials Lab, where the professor O. Ligon is the director of the lab. And we have four different groups, as you can see here. The first one is artificial muscle and soft robotics. Uh, which uh, the group I am working here, and the other groups are energy storage and structural battery, and energy harvesting and turbo electricity, and other one is mechanical metamaterial and smart structures. So uh, we have almost like twenty two members right now uh, who are working in these four different disciplines. So uh, this paper actually recently came in Science. And they predict that the in combination of AI and these soft robots, maybe in the future it makes some revolution. Uh, it can enhance. It can be uh, useful to enhance the patient cares, and uh, also uh, uh, you can see the uh, in the era of five G and AI. You know. Uh, uh, I believe that the electroactive artificial muscles are the most appropriate for the medical robots because of its simplicity and miniature structures and 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 other like useful properties. Uh, this is one uh, one uh, one scenario I I I took here. So uh, in the futuristic and technical like skin featuring the robotics, advanced robotics. You know, uh, for human, uh, the interactions of robots to some uh, electronic devices, we need very soft touch uh, because hard. If if there is some hard uh, hard touch or hard something, uh, it hard process, it may break. So this is very crucial to uh, manage like uh, the interactions between uh, robot and human machine uh, interaction. So I uh, I think like uh, the field is very promising for uh, for the future. 
in this slide, I highlight uh, about about the other different types of artificial mast cells which are available and and there's uh, a disadvantage for uh, for like sophisticated applications like if we need to use in some confined space like in in biomedical systems our our device should be very small and it should be operated like by remote it should be controlled by the remote uh, but this type of uh, available uh, actuators which have some uh, drawbacks like for example in hydraulic uh, actuators you need like large space or large volume and there is some complexity in the structures similarly in pneumatic uh, soft actuators uh, uh, there is some no uh, non-linear actuations happens and also it's like the structure is very complex uh, similarly uh, in thermal and in sma actuators is very good but in sma actuators there is some uh, challenges for the rate of actuations both in heating side and cooling side and also it's like cost is very high so so these are the uh, the drawbacks of different uh, available uh, artificial muscles uh, so uh, we have to think like something something uh, new and to overcome like this type of uh, this type of uh, problems and for the real world uh, applications because for real world applications uh, uh, we have to think think the uh, stability and uh, and and like how we can control like uh, control actuations and and also uh, the force force and everything we have to we need to uh, optimize. So uh, in our lab, we start uh, uh, work on soft robotics before my before before I have joined here. Uh, they start like from 2009. They start and up to 2017, they work on graphene and CNT. And uh, in both cases, uh, we get some promising data, but as uh, but those data is not enough for some real uh, for for some real uh, robotic application. So then we switch to some maxine. Maxine is uh, is a new two uh, D material which has very uh, high electrical conductivity and high specific capacitance. But still now the maxine uh, is not uh, is, uh, the scientist. Uh, uh, they are trying to make it stable, but it's it's not stable. So uh, when you consider the uh, durability, then uh, there there's some problems will come for uh, for long term use. So after that, we switch uh, to cops and mops. Uh, uh, from 2019, when I joined uh, to solve like this type of issues, uh, so we we introduce like uh, these carbon uh, carbon materials. These cops belongs to covalent organic frameworks, and mops belong uh, it's metal organic frameworks. So we uh, we thought that whatever the properties needed for these electronic artificial muscles, we can fulfill by the COFS and the MOPS materials by some fine tuning or by changing the structural properties. Because these materials, uh, if you consider then these COPS and MOPS materials are uh, is biocompatible because they are based on carbon materials. Uh, even in the MOPS, there is some metal, but the metal content is very low, and we consider only those metals uh, which, uh, which 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 are like biocompatible, like nickel, cobalt, or iron. And the unique properties is that like this type of materials, it can be easily uh, scalable. We can industrially uh, scale this uh, production of these materials, and they have robust stability, uh, not in open air, but even in like strong heat or some other acidic or basic medium, they are they are highly stable, and we can tune their structural properties. Uh, when you see, when you make this type of active materials, then we can tune like uh, to change their properties. So if we need like a high bending, so for high bending, we can change the uh, framework structures that can accommodate high a higher number of ions. So, so that uh, it can bend more because electronic actuators is based on ionic movement. 
electrochemical ionic movement, if more ions moves to the electrode surface from the electrolyte, then more mechanical bending we can get. So these things we can tune. And also they are biocompatible and inexpensive. And the COFs, if we consider only covalent organic frameworks, then they are metal free. So they can be uh, can be digestible so for biomedical type of applications these materials are very very suitable than other like vaccines or uh, some other uh, metal oxide or uh, metal oxide type of material so we when i joined that time i designed this uh, nitrogen and sulfur rich scops materials uh, from 2018 to 2019 and and we solved some existing issue of electronic artificial muscle, but still there are some issues. Then we change the functional groups and we we make like some PIM1 based uh, covalent triazine frameworks, which can improve the uh, improve the properties like electroionic artificial muscle properties. And then finally, we we design like we optimize all those properties by designing these new polysulfonated cops and and we, uh, we get very high uh, uh, like um, high performance like that that are needed like uh, in terms of stability in terms of rising time in terms of uh, bending displacement so it is very very uh, we can use these materials for uh, some some uh, some real applications like real, de real devices. So I am going, uh, I will go like one by one, how we develop this one and what are the uh, data we get and how we demonstrate these materials. So the first one is this, this COP we designed first, nitrogen and sulfur is covalent organic frameworks. And if you see these framework structures, it is the conjugation like double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. So it, it the electron can move throughout the family structures. This is one unit cell. So it, this unit cell will extend and uh, the there is there is like uh, extended conjugation. So the framework is electrically conducting and also it contains heteroatoms like nitrogen, sulfur and oxygen. Those heteroatoms will help to make the surface polar. And due to that polar, uh, effects more ions can uh, can be induced and more ions can come so the ion storage capability will be increased and also this force because this type of material have very high surface area and, and high porosity and that pore will help to accommodate or transport the electrolyte ions so uh, we we use these materials uh, in electroionic artificial muscles and and uh, and we apply this material for soft touch application as i mentioned before that uh, the interactions between the robot and the and and some electronic devices should be soft it should not be hard so we demonstrate that this type of artificial muscles can uh, can easily do this task by the soft touch they can open the folder or they can uh, scroll the pages so this is the uh, this is the schematic like how how it works. So this is of uh, of uh, this unit cells and when it's present as an electrode due to this high surface area and high high polar high polarity of the surface, it can uh, the ions can easily move. Uh, to the electrode surface and due to the movement, uh, the cations and anions, because we choose like bigger cation and smaller anions, and due to the size, mis uh, size uh, mismatch, there is some uh, volume expansion and contraction happens, and due to that volume expansion and contraction in the electrode surface, there is bending, mechanical bending happens. So uh, as you can see here, uh, this is the first figure is we check the relaxation, back relaxation, because most of the uh, artificial muscles which are based on IPMC, they shows back relaxation. So as the time goes, the uh, actuation uh, will, uh, the displacement will decrease. Uh, so first we remove this back relaxations by using these COFs materials because because of the COFs materials have high ionic storage capability, and then we 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 check the uh, like controlled mechanical bending. So if we increase the voltage starting from very low 0.1 to uh, like 1.0 volt, then we can 
they had different level of bending displacement, mechanical bending displacement. And then uh, uh, the most important one is the stability. So we check the stability up to 20,000 cycle and uh, there is no uh, degradation, almost like 97 to 98% retention happens after 20,000 cycles in open air with continuous, uh, continuous actuation. So uh, after, after getting uh, this data, we use it for uh, like uh, swiping the soft touch screens. So here, this video you can see here. So where it, it can be, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we implement these uh, artificial muscles to scroll the pages in uh, some iPad devices and it, it can easily, uh, easily do this one. And uh, and if you see the uh, see the morphology like SEM morphology, as I mentioned, that this type of materials, covalent organic frameworks like carbon material, they have a very high porous structures. You can easily see the macro pores. So uh, these pores are like very very helpful to increase the ion accommodation or ionic transportation. And and this is the storage capacity the, uh, in terms of uh, cyclic voltammetry. And you can find when you check without uh, without these COPS materials, the, just we, we made one uh, artificial muscles and we we get some uh, CB response curve. And if, if we add this one, then it will increase like maybe four times, uh, four times. So that means that this material is very much active to uh, increase the ionic storage capacity of the artificial muscles and accordingly the mechanical bending uh, is enhanced. But the uh, issue is still exists is the low force and uh, the low bending. The bending is not sufficient and also the force is not very high. But for for some applications, we need a uh, larger force. So we we think uh, that how we can improve or how we can uh, uh, you know remove this this issue. So we go to the next. Uh, uh, also, uh, this is like touch, like how how touch uh, can useful to open some folder. So I am not going uh, going more details. I am going to the next project. So where, uh, as I mentioned, that there, there is still some issues of low force and uh, low bending. So we think like how we can improve these things. So then uh, we consider this PIM1. PIM1 is uh, a polymer of intrinsic microporosity. So it has very high, uh, high porous structure and surface area is more than uh, 1200 meters square per gram. So, uh, so we thought that if we use high surface area uh, covalent organic frameworks and if we design like some unit here like dibenzo paradioxin unit, those units can be helpful to interact with the electrolyte cations and anions and it will improve the uh, um, ionic, ionic storage capacity in, in electrochemical operation, electrochemical cycles and uh, and we can get like higher actuation or higher force or higher bending displacement. So we design these materials and we synthesize and we use it for active materials in electronic artificial muscles. And this is like uh, uh, how how we made these materials, and we use as a soft touch fingers to demonstrate uh, by play uh, uh, by playing some song like here uh, in electronic devices. And if you see here, these materials, the ACM, HR, HR, uh, ACM and TM image, then this, this type of materials, the uh, good thing is that because these materials, we can make very, very pure by some purification method. And, and if the material is pure, then we can get the nano, like in sub nanometer scale, like their orientation, how they orient each atom or each like, uh, each each phenyl or each groups how they orient like vertically or horizontally and how they looks like and are they like crystalline or amorphous like that so uh, so uh, so we after getting this data we find that these materials will have very high ionic storage capacity and will be uh, useful to improve the uh, um, electroionic artificial muscles uh, actuation properties. 
So this is, uh, we check first the ionic storage capacity in different electrolyte, like acidic, basic, and ionic liquid. And we find that uh, our optimized materials, like the covalent CTFs materials, which will give around more than 500 Friday per gram specific capacitance in uh, acid mediums and uh, ionic liquid mediums. And we con we construct the uh, artificial muscle in ionic liquid. So uh, this ionic liquid uh, capacitance is very, very important. And, and here you can check that at one volt, we get around uh, 23 peak to peak bending displacement, 23 millimeters. That is quite high than, than the before. And also in the DC response, we just use 0 0.5 volt DC. And for the optimized samples, we get more than 10 millimeter, uh, millimeter displacement. And also there is no back relaxation. So that is the good signs that we get uh, that this materials is much better than the previous one. But the uh, so we get like a little bit higher uh, force. The, in this case, we get like 28 times higher of its own weight, and the rising time is a little bit high. It's around four to five seconds. So here I, I would like to mention that the rising time, this will depend on the elect, electrical conductivity of the material. So if we use like some electric conducting materials, which are very, very, very conductive, like maxine or graphene, then, then the rising time is very low. Uh, like we can we can have like within one or two second rising time, but as the, as this type of materials they are electronically they are conjugated, but the electrical conductivity is not as like maxines or uh, graphene, so that's why the rising time is little bit high, like four to five second, and and then uh, uh, we we use these materials uh, to make some array. So we made 10 actuators, like 10 fingers, and one control uh, control panel where we can control each actuator. And then finally, we, we use these actuators in app to play some song uh, in, in smart devices. Uh, but the uh, so in this project we remove these problems like back relaxes and irregular responses and low bending, but uh, the but the force and the, uh, uh, force is still low like moderate and 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 also the moderate like rising time is a little bit high. So I can show you like this. This one is the keyboard test. So initially we did the keyboard test that. Uh, we attach each actuator with each, each switch, electronic switch, and then we operate uh, one by one. And here uh, you can see here that we, uh, by using this, this uh, control panel, we uh, play the happy birthday song. But uh, still, uh, there are some problems like the force and the response rising time. So, uh, so we uh, we think uh, for, we think a lot for our third project. We uh, develop many active materials, but we failed many times. We failed, and then finally, uh, we develop some common host. A common host uh, for electrode and electrolytes. So, in the electrolyte. We use nephion, and nephion has sulfonate functional group, and we design some active materials that also have some sulfonate groups. And this common host actually uh, facilitate the exchange of the ions from uh, electrode to electrolyte, very uh, relaxing way. And we get like very high uh, performance, like actuation we get even at 0 0.01 volt, it shows some mechanical actuations and also uh, like very high frequency, like up to five hertz, it, it can give uh, mechanical bending. So uh, these materials actually, uh, we theoretically also prove the structure of the materials and uh, 
and uh, we, this is the schematic how these ions can come and ion can move through the nano nano pores which which are acting as nano reactors in this system electrode systems and this common sulfonate group as i mentioned before that the electrode electrode side this this uh, cofs as sulfonic uh, sulfonate groups and also in electrolyte side, in the nephion side, there is also uh, this sulfonate group. So these sulfonate groups will help to uh, exchange these ions, cations, uh, very easily in elect some electrical field. When, when we apply some electrical field, then the ions can easily move from uh, electrolyte to electrode surface or electrode surface to the uh, uh, to the uh, electrolyte so that that actually helps to enhance the activation performance so uh we remove the back relaxation problems we remove the low bending we remove the low response uh we remove uh the low force and also the irregular response so as you can see here uh, this is the cm image uh so it has like uh the porous unique porous structures and this is the layer structure how the layers of the cof materials are there and also uh, this is some uh, we we make some simulations and uh, we 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 came up that the eclipse forms has more uh, uh, stability or the rp value is 6.56 percent and when you check the uh, eis like impedance uh, impedance measurement we found that this uh co cofs materials uh, can help for <laughs> help for the diffusion of ions like enhance the diffusion of ion enhance very and uh, enhance uh in comparison to the reference uh artificial muscles so uh uh, so after after getting those data, we apply for some uh, mechanical actuation uh, by applying different voltage, starting from very low, as you can see here, 0 0.01 volt to uh, like here I put like 0 0.6 volt, and we get like even at 0 0.6 volt, we get like more than 10 uh, millimeter uh, peak to peak bending displacement. Uh, uh, and also like in the frequency side if you see even at high frequency like five hertz frequency we we can get uh the mechanical bending so in, in most of the cases like when you need uh uh high frequency uh high frequency actuations i think uh, most of the available uh electronic actuators will fail because they, they will not uh show any actuation after uh like 0 0.2 or 0 0.4 or maximum one hertz but uh, we got for the first time here that we can use these materials up to five hertz uh, to get uh, significant or uh, substantial uh, mechanical bending. And uh, then we check the force, blocking force, and with the blocking force, uh, we get like high, which is like previously it was 28 times, but now we get more than that. So that is 34 times of its weight. And also the response types, uh, response uh, response time uh, will uh, improve so initially it was four to five seconds but now we come with uh, 1.5 second that is very good uh, for some uh, real applications and the, and and we use these materials uh, for separation of some uh, uh, micro droplet fluid in some confined channel so as you can see here uh, uh, here you can see this is the uh, cross-section image of the ionic artificial muscles where the electrodes are made by PS cops and some conducting additives and the electrolyte is nephew on an ionic liquid and this so, so you can see here that there is very good uh, bonding between the electrolyte and electrode so uh, so it's, it's removed the problem of delamination because most of the conducting uh, polymer actuators, they are facing the delamination problem. As the time goes, uh, these electrode layers are separated from the electrolyte and the, uh, their performance will reduce and, and sometimes later it, it becomes like no, uh, uh, not active. But in this case, it's not happens because of the presence of sul uh, surface functional group. They they are connected very strongly, and we can use for like long cycles. So in this case, we go up to fifty thousand uh, cycles, and we found there is no uh, degradation of the actuation performance. 
And finally, we use these materials, as you can see here, to uh, separate the droplet. As is, uh, so we call it like fluidic switch to control the fluid flow uh, in a confined channel. And we successfully uh, separate like two different fluid. So this is the schematic how we make because uh, normally the actuator surface is hydrophilic in nature. So uh, when you use the, some this, this type of fluid because they are also uh, hydrophilic, so somehow uh, it will decrease or it will uh, de uh, damage the surface. So first we coat with some hydrophobic material, hydrophobic coating to make it super hydrophobic. And then we install it here for this uh, demonstration. So uh, you can see here how the, in this movie how we can uh, separate successfully these two uh, different uh, droplets like one is red in color another one is blue in color so when this uh, actuator is switched from here to this side then this channel will open and when it goes to the other side then the other channel is uh, open and, and we made it very low voltage you can see here it is only two volt plus two volt and minus two volt we we use so it is very uh, convenient like to use uh, if we consider some other micro droplet separation applications or even in, uh, in, 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 in the blood in the blood cells like if you can uh, make some uh, uh, control flow of some uh, some blood uh, in our uh, in human body so we, we can be installed this type of uh, soft soft muscles. So uh, the, those are like whatever I discuss about the covalent organic material based uh, uh, artificial muscles. And after that, we realized that only uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, artificial muscle, electronic artificial muscles can give you like some mechanical bending, but uh, to use it for some locomotion, like if you want to, uh, move from one position to another position that one can also like some people are work or we are also we also uh, make some inch or robot that can uh, that can move from one position to another position but that is not sufficient for uh, some applications like biomedical applications so we thought that how about to uh, develop some some magnetic properties on this type of material so that we can easily move the material by uh, externally applying magnetic field. And then uh, if needed, we can change the shape by using electrical field or magnetic field. And we can be, uh, this can be useful for uh, some biomedical applications like drug delivery. So it can carry the drug from one place to another place and, and it can release the drugs and also it can be used for like some magnetic catheters uh, itself, uh, like drug delivery system. So uh, we check the literature, this uh, electroionic and magneto active artificial muscle, but up to 2022, we didn't find any report uh, by using these two in one uh, artificial muscles. There are by bimodal actuators, these they are, but not electroionic and magneto active artificial muscles. So, uh, so we we try to uh, find like which type of materials can be useful for this type of muscles. So when you check these materials, like available magnetoactive materials like neodymium, iron, boron, magnet, or uh, Fe3O4, these materials have magnetic properties, but they don't have any electrochemical or electroionic properties. So we cannot use uh, to solve the, this purpose, like dual responsive purpose by using these materials. So we uh, thought about the metal organic frameworks because organic frameworks, as I mentioned before, the covalent organic frameworks, they they can effectively use for uh, electronic actuations. And the metal, if we choose like some metal, nickel, iron, or cobalt, they have the magnetic properties and we can use those magnetic properties for a magnetic motion or magnetic uh, actuation. So uh, this is the mechan like you know basic uh, mechanism how it will work. So we uh, we uh, schematic it that uh, 
uh, in presence of electroactive, uh, elect in presence of electricity, it will bend. And also, if it is magnetic, this this layer is magnetic, then also it can bend more due to this magnetic field because the metal cluster which will be present in this MOF structures, the the electrons can be aligned in presence of magnet and and they will attract to the magnetic field. So there, there will be some magnetic uh, magnetic uh, actuation will happen. So this is our first uh, materials, nickel MOFs, nickel based metal organic frameworks, which we designed to solve these dual responsive uh, electronic and magnetoactive artificial mass cells things. And here we choose uh, some specific organic frameworks that when, when you make like it's magnetic because uh, no, in, in normal MOFs they are not magnetic but if we if we treat by control uh, temperatures or control environment then they will give some magnetic properties so the, and also this organic linker when we treat temperatures then they will convert it to graphitic structures or uh, uh, a graph and graphitic structure have some electronic conductivity so they can help to conduct the electricity and these metals can help to get the uh, magnetic properties so uh, this is this is like our aim and we synthesize this nickel morphs and then we uh, made these materials by uh, treating 700 degree temperatures in nitrogen atmosphere where there is a presence of we uh, we characterize these materials and we found that there is presence of pure nickelic metallic nickel and nickel oxide and some graphitic layers uh, which can be useful for electron transfer and and it, it contains like porous structures and surface area very high surface area so those are useful for high electronic artificial muscles so these are some uh, HRTM image where we can see here this 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 area is uh, is presence of like nickel mainly nickel and there are some percentage of nickel oxide because this one 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 and two zero zero plan is mainly based on nickel so most of what the metallic nickel and in this met, uh, uh, it, it will uh, surrounded by some graphitic layers you can see this layer structure so these these are the, the electron can transport in these layers and so so we can be useful for electroactive as well as the magnetoactive uh, artificial muscles and uh, we so these are some general tests we check the uh, eis like impedance and we get uh, that these materials also have like very high ionic diffusion and low uh, low resistance and in terms of uh, you can see the capacity capacitance ionic capacitance it it is like around more than uh, eight folds or nine folds then uh, compared to the without uh, if you if you don't use any MOFs materials like the the the, the uh, normal uh, uh, artificial muscles so you can find uh, like twenty fold higher ionic charge storage capacity we can get uh, by using these uh, nickel MOFs active materials. And uh, when, I ch when we check the uh, magnetic properties, we get uh, the, it, it shows like some ferromagnetic properties, like soft ferromagnetic properties, so that uh, it implies that we can easily magnetize and demagnetize it. Uh, so uh, th this also helpful for, uh, to use as some magnetic uh, actuation purposes. And this is uh, this is uh, the two data here I I I, uh, I place. One is this one is for electronic only, and we get very very high uh, displacement. You can see here more than thirty millimeter peak to peak displacement when you use one volt and. Uh, and for magnetic magnetic properties, when I use the magnetic field of around 50 millitesla, so uh, for electrical stimuli, we can get some response like some bending. And then if you use magnetic stimuli, then we get more uh, uh, more bending. So so we can improve uh, improve the bending response and also the force. Uh, so those are important for some uh, complex interactions like where we need to uh, make some complex uh, robotic. Uh, robotic demonstration or complex, complex robotics. So in this, uh, uh, here you can see that how it responds like uh, in, in electrical, electric field, this mob, mob base is very 
uh, very good than compared to the previous uh, whatever we demonstrated. Uh, so here we uh, make this video by changing the frequency from 0 0.1 hertz to up to up to one hertz and as you know that we increase the frequency uh, uh the displacement will reduce but uh, uh but we get like very high uh high displacement this is like um, five hertz also we can get like very high uh like uh, some mechanical uh, displacement with high force this is 0.5 hertz and this is one hertz yeah, so we go up to uh, it's more than 10 hertz. Yeah, so after 20 hertz, there is almost zero uh, mechanical bending. So then, uh, and this one also like switching, we can on off so we can make like uh, actuation like here, magnetic field off, so it comes to here and then on, then again, it will go here. So uh, so like like if, uh, uh, we can make like uh, some uh, uh, some continuous like bending and, and this, this thing. Uh, and then uh, after getting with these uh, responses, uh, we apply these actuators to mimic the human bard. Uh, because in the hum humming bird hovering position, because uh, uh, you know that in the humming bird they hover at the air um, by flapping the wings, but uh, uh, but here we use like three actuators, two actuators in the wings to for, uh, for the movement of the wings, and another actuators at the center of the body, and one magnet is here so that can uh, help uh, to hover the. Uh, how about the human bot? So I can show you the video for more clear uh, explanation. So you can see here uh, that uh, these actuators can be useful uh, to mimic like this type of complex uh, uh, robotic demonstration. And then this is these are my other works I did with uh, my colleagues. Uh, the first one is uh, you can see the eye, eye, eyelid blinking by using uh, ionic artificial muscles. And second one is the eyeball eyeball blinking. Uh, we can make so here we use uh, uh, some other materials like maxine and mop together uh, together and then. Uh, then we make uh, this type of demonstrations uh, and also here we one most important thing we get is the rising time is very less less than one second because of the presence of maxine and and mop helps to stabilize the maxine so uh, we can in the future we can use the cops and to increase the rising uh, to increase the rising speed we can use some uh, conducting uh, materials like maxine or graphene and then we can improve more uh, uh, the artificial art artificial muscles actuation properties and this is the re uh, recent ones we we we, we develop like inch ohm robot but here we we work on the electrolyte not on the electrode so we make some uh, some electrolyte uh, with with more conducting phase so that ion can easily move uh, and due to due to that conducting phase we uh, improve the uh, actuation performance in like in many folds the, uh, so uh, we demonstrate two different things one is inkstrom robot another one is kinetic art So these are the like different different view of the uh, kinetic arts the top view and the frequency is two hertz yes okay so uh, uh, i i think i i finished uh, thank you very much for for your uh, kind attention yeah so now uh, i will be happy to answer your questions Okay, yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Manmata, for this uh, exciting presentation. Uh, lots thank of results. Uh, so is there any questions from the audience? Yeah, um, can you hear me? 
Yeah, go ahead and start right now. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, it was amazing demonstrations with different materials and so on. Uh, I have a question. I'm not a material scientist, so there is no material science questions. So it's based on robotic application. When you mentioned as an artificial muscle, mm. uh, I always think of I force output, um, artificial muscle, and showing different motions, uh, like not like you mentioned, amazing antagonistic motion based on the polarity of your applied uh, current or voltage, right? So can you have an idea that can this can able to pull, for example, uh, a one kilogram of weight with the configuration uh, that is, or, I... or, or also can it also produce motions instead of having antagonistic motion, can it also able to make linear motion um, instead of antagonistic bending alone? So, or different motions like twisting and so on. Yeah. Okay. So you okay. So you have like three or four different questions. So I will come one by one. Yeah. First of all, uh, uh, to pull like load, uh, we achieve like uh, up to forty eight times of its own weight. Like suppose the actuator weight is one gram, so it can lift maximum forty eight grams. Mm -hmm. It's not not more than that, like uh, in terms of weight, it can lift like 40, 80 grams. So we reach up to this level at this stage. But uh, yeah, it's possible to improve. Like if if we make like more sophisticated artificial, electronic artificial muscles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then second one is the antagonistic uh, bending motions. Yeah, this one like uh, for electronic actuations, we normally get like, the bending, like bending motion. But for linear motion, I think if you make it magnetic, then we can make like some linear motion. Like if you can pattern the structures, like some metal structure or something, and then we can uh, design like the active and inactive side, then we can make some contraction and expansion motion in, in presence of the magnetic field. And, uh, and and uh, I forget your last questions. What is your last question? Can you just... Uh, can it do different motions? You showed the antagonistic motion. Can it do linear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so in the different motions, I, I'm explaining that, uh, like, if we, if we make some meta structures and we make some, uh, like, active part and inactive part in different design, like 3D space, then we can make it shrink or we can make it expand or maybe we can make it uh, like uh, twisting and rocking, like those things, we, it's possible to make. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. More questions from audience? Um, yeah, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation, Mamata. Uh, yes. I feel curious about the uh, two aspects of your research. The first one is about the uh, the fabrication methods that you are using and the reproduci uh, reproducibility of the samples. Mm. Uh, how complex is uh, preparing these uh, prototypes in terms of time and equipment? Mm. And uh, how replicable are sample by sample? By sample? Mm. And the second one is about um, the, the activation uh, method that you are using is by electricity. Uh, mm. you, are, you are testing always voltage and frequency. Uh, mm -hmm. But about what about the power uh, in terms of current? How low or high is the current that you require for activate the samples? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for your first questions, like the reproducibility of the fabrication. So here we we use like very simple process to fabricate. We just use uh, like nephron membrane we prepared. So it, it it can be industrially you can make the nephron membrane. Or it, also you can buy from the uh, uh, some some steam eldridge or something. And for electrode we just do like drop coating. We no need sophisticated instrument. Like we can we can drop like equal volume of electrolyte ink in both the side. So it's very easy to make and it is reproducible. Like. Uh, like there is no uh, way to make it like uh, different or uh, it's not reproducible. So it's very easy to fabricate and uh, we can make like large actuators, like whatever we need, the maybe five by five centimeter, 10 by 10 centimeter is no problem. So we just need like, like uh, 
drying the electrodeing by some heating like normally we use uh heater like, like uh, starter which which have like heating facility so we can we can easily make this type of uh, device so that is not uh, not uh, uh, problematic so it's very easy and the second one is uh, um, like uh, you ask about the power density uh, power density actually we calculate and it is uh, it is uh, relatively lower than the other actuators like uh, if we see that some conducting polymer actuators or ipmc actuator i didn't remember the exact value but uh, i can i can let you know after checking my paper that it is relatively lower uh, much lower than the uh, other type of actuator so i think energy uh, efficiency will be very high in case of uh, electronic actuator because the input voltage is very low you, you can see that 0 0.5 volt or 1 volt is sufficient uh, for this type of uh, actuation mm -hmm. okay yes thank you so much yeah thank you thank you uh, can i ask a question yes out of yes, uh, out of uh something can your material can be used for 3d printing using photopolymerization methods yeah 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 yeah. that actually uh, we are trying to do now so it's possible because we make one trial and uh, this materials is possible to make like uh, pp uh, yeah whatever you mentioned yeah okay. it is possible to make 3d printing okay. yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. thank you yeah i have a question also myself did you try to stack some of them, as you said, in a meta structure or in, in a way? And did you, and in that case, do you expect any interference between the different actuators that are collected, you know, next to each other? Uh, actually, in the eyeball, eye movement and eyelid movement, we need like large force. So in that case, we stack like five actuators together to get like mm -hmm. higher force. So mm. you can see here in this case, actually this this one, this movement we done by stacked actuator. So we stack like five actuator in one side and five actuator in another side. So if we stack, then the force will increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, hello. Uh, if you hello. let me, I also uh, yeah, hi, ask hi, a hi, question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, th thank you, Mato, for this nice presentation. Actually, we, we used to be colleague uh, before, and uh, I yes. know him. Uh, but I have um, I, I know what many of this uh, this work that uh, he present uh, I'm familiar with. But uh, I have one uh, technical question about the uh, the material that you use. Uh, some of them, uh, they uh, they have metals inside, like mm. the moths mm. that you mm. uh, uh, prepared. In that mm. case, you are not worried about oxidation and reduction uh, in uh, your because, electrode? Uh, uh, because it, this type of metals, you can see they are uh, confined by some graphitic layer. So they are not like, you know, free. You see, somehow they mm -hmm. are protected by this... Uh, these carbon structures so, oh, so they are wrapped so, inside yeah so they are wrapped inside so uh, the oxidation is minimized like in this case but if you use like pure nickel then there is a problem of oxidation mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay thank you thank you all right yeah i think we are uh, exactly on time so uh thank you so much uh, Manmata for this uh, interesting presentations. Yeah, please thank join you. me, you know, to uh, uh, applaud uh, uh, Manmata. Thank you so much, and uh, thank, thank you everyone for joining. Yeah. Thank, thank you, care. thank you. <laughs> <laughs>